city, and not just in Abasi Lakes, but beyond in a city. And I know the one or two of us can make a difference, but together as a church, we can make a difference. We can impact our city together as a people of hope, to take a message of hope. And this is the importance of us coming together, bringing a weekly tithes and, and giving as a resource so that we can do a thing, not just on Sunday for us being blessed in the service, but beyond, throughout the week, every single day, we can be a house of hope because of your giving. And this morning, we have an opportunity to go beyond even Australia. How exciting is that? It's a mission fan today, and we are supporting our mission in the Philippines. So uh, those who know us, so we have a shelter, the children's shelters in the Philippines in the Mindoro. These are children who are receiving education uh, because they live in a, a remote community and the parents can't send them to school. So those children come and stay in the shelter during the school terms. They get fed. Everything is actually a surprise for them. And we have a mission team going to serve them in September. There's about seven of them, I think, on the team. So this morning, as we bring our uh, giving on top of our weekly tithing and giving for the uh, mission for the Philippines, we are also collecting the seeds of hope to be sown into the Philippines for the children, to let those children know there is a future in Jesus Christ. There is a hope. You don't have to stay in a cycle of poverty. You know, it is to show them different ways and hope for the future in Jesus' name. So will you join us this morning of the vision of a house to give hope for the future as we bring our tithes and offerings and the mission giving. And we also have the mission lunch today. Who's excited? Something's cooking. I heard that there's a special um, chicken being cooked. Is that right? Uh, and also the Filipino sweets apparently. So uh, mission lunch is by donation. So after service will be served outside. That's also going to go on towards our mission. So can we pray over our givings? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just to thank you that you are our hope in every situation, every fear. There is an answer in the name of Jesus. We've just been singing about that this morning, Lord. So God, we just to pray over our givings, our weekly tithes and giving, Lord, and also for our mission in this morning, Lord. And we are so grateful that you choose us to partner with you to take the message of hope into the community beyond this building. And God, we are just so excited what you're about to do in and through our church in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's worship him as we give your buckets to come from the land.
thankful to God who is with us every step of our journeys. Every part of our lives, He touches. We want to include Him more. Get to know Him better and leaning on Him because He is so good. May that be our prayer. And all those that believed it said, Amen. Why don't you take a seat? Zeal, guys. We're back into school term, so you guys are back. Why don't you give them a round of applause? This is our Zeal, guys. Future of hope. In their community, we're also a, a vision of Jesus. A little snapshot of him. We are ambassadors of Christ. And we've been diving into a new series here at our 10 a.m. experience. And that is, would the real Jesus please stand up? And I, I know that sounds a little gimmicky, but actually what it is really inferring is that there is so much thinking around the person of Jesus, and a lot of it is wrong. A lot of it is incorrect, and what we've got to stand up for is the real Jesus. We have to stand up for Jesus, the real Jesus. So this is really a cry from our hearts. Would the real Jesus please stand up in our lives? Would the real Jesus really be known to those around about us? Not just the Jesus that's popular in the community. Because there's been a lot of movies, a lot of books. I know that we've heard a lot of things around Easter time. There's something new, either a movie or a book. And it piques people's interest, doesn't it? And, and we think, would this actually help Jesus or just help the author sell more books? Or the director sell more movies? I think it's actually to sell more books and sell more movies. And it's not just the books. Jesus is actually a popular celebrity in our culture. In pop culture, Jesus is a celebrity. I know you all know that Jesus was the first hipster, right? Is that right? Is, is, is that right? Well, yes, that's right. He had the beard. And it's just like any other celebrity, Jesus actually has this, this wonderful thing called merchandising. There are books, there are stories, there are fables, there is mugs, there's oodles of jewellery, there's posters, there's t-shirts, all sorts of things that you can buy. What would Jesus do? Caps and bangles and whatever else. JC sells. JC sells. But have they got it right? Or are we looking at a diluted version of God himself when they portray him? We need to portray him well. And so, will the real Jesus please stand up? Yeah. In our lives, will the real Jesus please stand up? Because most people view Jesus one way or another. And most people view Jesus through what they're told by the media and not by the Christians. Perhaps they think of him as a fairy tale character. Maybe they agree or disagree that he was a historical character only. Perhaps they see him maybe as a nice guy, but perhaps not as God himself. And this is not a new thing because Jesus actually had this type of response face to face with people. They didn't even think that he was, in his time, God himself. And so, most people today would probably describe Jesus generically as a nice guy. This guy, up on the slide. Nice guy Jesus. Nice guy Jesus. Now, <laughs> I think this guy is a watered down version of our saviour. I know that he might look like Jesus in every other way that you've come to know him, but this guy is nice guy Jesus, and I don't know that Jesus was really nice. I know that might be 
Not what you want to hear here at church. But today I think being nice means being a people pleaser or a crowd pleaser. And I think Jesus was anything but that. He was not a people pleaser. Jesus was a God pleaser. He went about trying to please the Father. His Father. And so we need to look to Jesus, the real Jesus, as he stands up in our lives and realize we cannot exchange these words nice. We cannot take it on. We've got to say that Jesus displayed love to people Because he loved God first. He loved God and looked to please the Father. And we also need to look to please God. And then out of our obedience to the Father, look to serve and love others. Perhaps the real Jesus is not so PC. I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. He didn't teach all roads lead to eternity. He wasn't a universalist. He wasn't such a nice guy when it comes to eternity. He actually displayed his character in taking up that cross, realizing that we can't do it on our own. Us being nice does not mean that we go to eternity. And I know that's not really nice for people to hear. Instead of being nice, Jesus was kind. And sometimes we get confused with these two words, nice and kind. So can I try and just clarify here this morning the difference between? When we're nice, it's normally on the outside and it's normally in an effort for people to perhaps like us, like Facebook has likes, And so that we might become more popular, per se, and accepted by others, so we're nice to people. Nice pleases people. Kind pleases God. Kindness actually comes from the heart, and kindness is actually a characteristic that led God to provide salvation in Jesus for us. And every single other person on this planet. In the Old Testament, kindness led God to give us green pastures, quiet waters, restoration for our souls. God's tender care, his kindness, makes him want to gather us under his wings and protect us. And keeps us close to him. That's kindness. God expresses his kindness as he provides for Elijah and also then the woman during the drought. He shows more kindness when later he raises the widow's son from the dead. And when Sarah goes away and is totally mean to Hagar and Ishmael, God shows his kindness to these two who are outcasts and gives them water and hope. In the New Testament, the Greek roots of kindness means uprightness and benevolence and describes the ability to act for the welfare of those who are perhaps taxing our patience. Do you like that? Mm -hmm. I love that. Every action, every word will be flavoured with grace. To maintain this Attitude towards people that we love is hard enough. So being kind requires us to have courage and strength that can only come from the Holy Spirit. Kindness is actually quite supernatural. When we've been hurt or offended by people, 